And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're taking a look at a small card game called Burning Rome, Rome's Nightmare. Now, it says it's such a dire, a dire title to that. This is a combat game based on Rome versus Carthage and some of the other tribes and things that Rome fought with here. And you could be some of the greatest generals. It's a quick, simple little combat card game. Now, I know that this particular arena has been done to death. Even quick card games have been done to death, but not too many super light combat card games exist about Rome versus Carthage. So let's give this one a whirl and see what we think. In this game, you're going to take one of four different factions. You have a whole deck of cards with this faction, and you're going to basically be building in a little bit of an army. Now, the book comes with some armies for each of the four different factions, so you can, you know, it tells you what cards you'll pick. But when you're doing this, you're going to pick a certain number of cards when building this, and each of these cards is going to have a command points number that it costs. You can see two, three, there's a four, you know, different amounts that they cost. And your total has to be 50. However, you're also going to have to start with an army strength. So I could start with an army strength of 10 or an army strength of 14. And then command points, which can go, you know, as high as 10. So you actually need those to be able to play the game. So you can't, you can't start with none of those, but you also need 15 cards that you're playing with and that you're adding to your, your deck. So once you're ready, both players will shuffle their deck and you'll start playing. One person is chosen to be the attacker and another person the defender, and you'll alternate turns back and forth. And the attacker is going to go first, but the attacker will lose a command point and have fewer cards than the defender. Now, on your turn, the first thing you'll do is you, if you have any abilities on a table that say at the beginning of your turn, you do those. But then you will draw a card into your hand or you'll gain two command points. So maybe I say, eh. I'll gain the two command points in my first turn. And then you can play as many or as few cards as you want. So when you're playing cards here, I might decide to play this guy here. He's going to cost one command point. So I might play him. I can play him to the left, the center, or the right as I play these cards. So as you play a card, maybe I'll play this one here, and that cost me three. I'll play this one here, and that one also costs me three. And then I'll play this one here, and that cost me two. Now, when you play a card in the same column, and there can be up to three cards in a column, four if you include a general, and the cards that are generals always have the word general in them. But when you place them on top of each other, you're going to place them like this. See, your whole attack strength is all these numbers combined. So right now, there are a five attack, and there are seven defense. Right now, this would be a four attack and a four defense. So on the bottom, only the bottom card will add those bottom two numbers that are available. So basically at the top, it's showing you your attack and defense, and then the bottom two, which are essentially range and whatever. But they, again, the skirmish and siege values, they're called, they're only added by the bottom card. Also, the bottom card special ability is available, which sometimes could be negative, like this guy here has every turn you need to spend one command point or deal three damage to your army. But if you cover that up with like a general, then I don't have to worry about that anymore. So you're going to be playing these cards. Then at the end of your turn, each of the columns that you have that you did not establish this turn. So it's actually not going to be any of these. It will be my first turn. But in the future, let's say I was fighting against this person. On my turn, I look, I do five attack. They have two defense. I do three damage to their army strength. And we just knock it down like that. And that's what you do. You just keep going back and forth. If your army strength ever goes to zero or your command points ever go to zero, you lose the game. Now there's more to it than that. When you play the full game, you can add in a second one here and play two versus two. There's enough boards to do that. There's a whole book here. Uh, there's a, the original book, How to Play in Quick Battles. But then you have another one here that gives you some very exact things. You can play Rome versus Carthage, and it will give you the different armies that you need to use to play through these different battles. Now, the decks are not 
I mean, you, you tell them apart by the symbol that's here. So you can see the Roman symbol here, and you go through. I'm not a huge fan of these. The numbers at the top are very clear, very easy, very simple. The pictures, though, I'm less enthralled with. The artwork itself is okay. But what I'm less enthralled with is if you have these tactic cards, for example, that you can play. And these are cards you can do during your turn. And here I can return one enemy cavalry with an attack of two or lower, or play one spear unit for free. Here I can move one enemy unit and play one infantry unit for free in a destination column. These are two different things, but they have the exact same picture. And in fact, here I have generals, and you need to have a general in your army, and you can see every single general from this faction has the exact same artwork, while they're all very, very different people with different special abilities. And I'm just not a big fan of that. I don't, I, I get that more artwork is more expensive, but letting everyone look together also makes the whole thing a bit more abstract. These boards themselves, um, they're not so easy to read. Now, this is basically attacker turn one, defender turn one, and you just go back and forth like that. And the discs, you know, the game comes with discs that you put on units that have been exhausted on your turn. And there is differentiation between the artwork of the four different armies. But for the most part, I found this, the, the, the components for this game are okay. But I think a lot of that's just due to the art. Now one thing I'll give them is that the game is certainly fast. And while I am obviously not a big fan of the artwork and reused artwork on the cards, if I was going to say negative things about this game, there's not a lot of bad things I can say about the game. I think it's more of a lack of good things. Well, but let's say some good things. It's quick. It's easy. It's simple. The symbology is not too difficult. I can play the cards and it's really back and forth fast and fun. I think for me, I mean, is that the fun is never exciting. See, the game itself, you're playing cards back and forth, and I'll attack you here, and you'll defend there, and I'll attack you here, and you'll defend there, you'll attack me here, I'll defend there, and we go back and forth. But because the numbers are all set in stone, and you have some cards and offensive and defensive tactics that you can play, but there's never any, like, ooh, What's going to happen on this? Now, some of that comes from dice rolling. And I know some people don't like dice rolling, but you take dice rolling out of this game and it loses some of that excitement. This big guy is going to beat you up. Um, it's going to certainly run you over on this side. And you're going to lose these command, this command point, army point thing just felt very dry and mechanical. So moving these around, and again, this doesn't make the game bad. I, I like the idea of the game more than the game itself. I was like, wow, I think it's neat. You pull out these different factions, which coincidentally, another problem I have with the game is that every faction has the same back to it. Why not make all the backs? I mean, I guess maybe they want you to be able to mix units together, but I mean, again, make these guys distinct. I never felt like I was Rome or Carthage. I was just playing with a different number of cards than the other person. And if you take that theming out of the game, then it just comes down to being a light little card game. Okay, fine. So it's a light card game. I'm going to play cards that help me out, make, maybe try to make some combos here, which again is combined with which cards will I draw. But there's lots of little tactical card games. And this one doesn't have any kind of feeling of, wow, that was a good move, or, oh, neat, you, you, you outsmarted me here. No, you just play a bunch of cards at each location, add numbers and subtract, and it's a little mathy, this adding and subtracting, and at the end of the day, you're like, yes, my Roman legions have been victorious because we added a little bit more than you did. And that just doesn't really work in that concept for me. So this is coming off as a negative review, and I don't necessarily mean it to be that way, Again, there's a lot of good things about the game. It, deck building is not that quick, actually, so that's not good. Um, because you have to like go through and look at all the card names to build the starter deck. Or you can go through and add numbers together, but it takes a while to figure out what's good and what's not good. Uh, um, but it, it's fast. And it's easy to teach. I can teach this game probably in five minutes. Once, if, I, if you don't have to build your deck and just say, here's your deck, here's my deck, let's go. And it resolves quickly. And the back and forth interplay is interesting. It's just not interesting enough for me to get this game. So I know that this review is basically seemingly to boil down to the fact of, yeah, wasn't that exciting. But that's probably a good tagline. Dice Tower Judgment, fast and simple, just not very compelling.